This week on the vlog, we continue in Exodus, and we are going to talk about biblical leadership. Last week, I sat out here and recorded the vlog because it was that, because the weather was so beautiful. My chair is completely frozen into the deck. Alright, so that chair is completely frozen in. There is a there is a seat of ice, but I'm sitting on it just because. Just because. This week on the vlog, we're gonna talk about biblical leadership. My butt is completely frozen. Alright, I'm back inside. I couldn't resist the urge to film a little bit outside because the juxtaposition was just too great from recording two days ago three days ago in 68 degree sunshine and then um, I love the snow but it was quite a white morning quite a juxtaposition of seasons here in Wisconsin hey welcome to week seven like I said outside we're talking about biblical leadership this week on the vlog I have always been fascinated by this story of, of Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, coming to, to see how his son-in-law is doing. He's happy to hear how things are going well, but Moses also takes the opportunity to tell him some of the details of what's going on and, and how he's spending so much of his time acting as judge. The people of God are sitting around, and any time they have a dispute, it's up to Moses to teach them what... Uh, what God has to say on these matters and 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 he's the judge and and Jethro basically says this isn't gonna work this is not sustainable you have all these men sitting around why not teach them as as you know and as you've been doing but then also appoint them to be judges and essentially he's saying build up a team build up some other judges so that all this burden isn't on you and you alone. I re I've read this story numerous times and didn't really understand this until Andy Stanley started talking about it quite a few years back and he is one of my favorite, actually probably my number one favorite leadership guy. Uh, he speaks clearly, he pulls out things that I've never really been able to grasp from the Bible and this is this is one of them where Andy says Andy Stanley just says it's not right for you to be doing this all by yourself and you need to build a team and you need to get other people involved and Andy Stanley uses a phrase with leadership and he says this leadership is getting things done through other people I've always loved that definition of leadership not everybody agrees with that definition of leadership. I meet with a group of guys and I, we were talking about leadership one morning and when I said that, a handful of them, a couple I should say, a couple looked at me and, and, and pushed back on the definition and I think I, I didn't do it justice. When you say the phrase getting things done through other people, it has this connotation of you're, you're manipulating them or you're getting them to do things just for the sake of you. And 
if I would have done a better job of describing it, Andy Stanley is not advocating that at all. The idea of leadership is, is being able to do more for a team, for an organization than you could ever do alone. We, a lot of us have been in situations where you can, you know, either at work or on a team or even in a family, everything runs through one person. When everything runs through one person, you get that bottleneck. In my experience, it, it, took, me, it took me a while to really understand what this means and there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a level of humility you need to have when you understand what this means to get things done through other people because there's certainly a lot of opportunity for, for that mani manipulation to happen where you know, you're still in charge and you're just barking out orders. But I don't think that's what Jethro was talking about here and I don't think that's what Andy Stanley's talking about. True biblical leadership is saying, I'm going to train you with what I know. And, and Jethro says that. He says, teach them his decrees and instructions and show them the way they're to live and how they are to behave. But then the next, sex, next section, but then he says, but select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trust, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for all the people. The simple cases, they can decide for themselves. That'll make your load lighter. As I said, we've all been in organizations where everything runs through one person, and that can evoke some pretty strong emotions. As a part of Blackhawk Church, I've always appreciated how uh, the leaders of Blackhawk Church have have leveraged leadership and leadership teams. They've said, for us to get these kind of things done, we need to have not only a lot of teams, but we need to have strong teams. We're not going to start something with just one or two people. We're going to need at least a team of three people to get things done, to start ministries, to to start different teams. And I'm so proud of my church that that we that we choose to do ministry like that. Not everybody's a leader. So some of you are listening to these listening to me saying, "Well, what what is that for me? I'm not a leader." Well, for one, I think we all need to at least lead ourselves. But even for those of us who are not leaders, I think it's important to understand maybe you're not a leader, but maybe someone like Moses is going to be calling calling on you to lead something. Or if not to lead something, if you're just um part of a team, it helps to understand leadership culture and successful business and successful organizational culture, especially in a church like ours. If you're serving on a team, understand that um, these leaders are appointed by God. They were tapped on the shoulder by other leaders. And if your role is just to be a member on that team, know that you doing your job is helping another leader do their job. And if maybe you've been a participant on a team for many years, maybe maybe the next step is to say, God or team leader or whatever, what's next for me? Are you calling me to lead? I love this example of biblical leadership. I love thinking about what does a culture need to do? Culture, what does an organization, a church need to do to be successful? Because as another great leadership man, uh, Bill Hybel says, I believe the church is the hope of the world. And that's a very bold statement. But as I've grown in my Christian faith, I've come to believe that to be very true, that while I do believe government can help us, while I do believe schools and community groups can offer a lot of things, I do believe the church is the hope of the world. And, I, and I'm proud that my church, Blackhawk, values leadership and builds into leaders and builds into team members and says thank you to team members because if this church grew solely on the shoulders of Chris Dolson, Matt Metzger, Nancy Lindroth, three, four of our biggest leaders, it needs to be more than them. It needs to be you. It needs to be me. And I think we can look at Exodus 18 and think, what, what does that mean in my life? What, what can I glean from Jethro speaking into Moses' life, saying, train up others to help be leaders? in the kingdom of God. How about you? What have you learned from week seven of 
love this book. Are you keeping up? Are you writing in your journal? Checking out the audio like I've suggested? Are you asking questions? Are you writing down answers? Are you putting your thoughts down and, and really reflecting on the first couple chapters of the Bible and what that means for your life? I'm filling up my journal, rocking, and uh, I hope you are too. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.